Okay, so I'm going to play around with uh, the search widget for the ArcGIS JavaScript API, right? The uh, search widget's really cool. It's probably, if I had to take a guess, aside from like Zoom, which and Attribution, which are there by default uh, when you build an app, I'm going to guess it probably is the most used widget in the JavaScript API. I have absolutely zero metrics to back that statement up. But take it as fact. There's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with it. I mean, there's a reason that uh, people use it a lot. So let's go and check out just some of the doc for search widget and why it's so popular, right? And the fact is, it kind of does a lot of stuff that you'd want it to do, uh, or you'd probably want to add to an app anyway, which is search, right? I want to find something. Uh, search for a place. Uh, so every now and then I get questions about it. And I, I, I'm doing this one today because I actually did get a interesting question about search widget where someone wanted to, uh, so let's go look at a sample. I'll, I'll give you an idea of what uh, they were trying to do. So here we go. So here's a, here's a sample like in 3D, right? Um, so what somebody wanted to do was to say, do a search, but they did not want the search widget to zoom to the location for the result, right? They just wanted to have the search do its thing, find it, and display the pop-up. That's it. That's all they wanted it to do. Behind the scenes, the search widget by default is going to use the uh, ArcGIS Geocoder uh, services to do all of the work, and it handles how to make the request and everything, right? It's super cool. And, there, and I'll show you also how you can use the search view model to do custom searches without having to use the widget. I can cover that too. Here, so I'm just gonna play around with this a little bit. So first off, how would I do it so that it doesn't do the zoom, right? Disable that. So let me go ahead over here, uh, bring in the search widget. So okay, so to create a search, all I need to do is create a uh, new instance here. And technically, I don't need to do anything other than this. I could create the search widget, use it, add it to a page, find some results, and I'm good. I don't need a view. I don't need to tie this to a map at all. I could just display it somewhere and everything would work. You could pass it uh, options. It like the map view. It can take options for a container, right? So I could have a container element to display it somewhere on the page. So I could have an entire app built just around the search widget, find some locations and maybe um, um, do something with that, right? I don't know what I would do but I could do something. I've seen people do that. The, the, the main page of the wrap is only the search widget and they have some other custom funk they do to make some magic happen. For now, I'll use the view and this is how the search widget is going to tie to zoom to the result of the search and how it's going to display the pop-up and all that cool stuff. Let me add this to the view. UI dot dot add search. And I think I don't know how we decided this was the way to do it. I think it's just typical, but you just add to the top right. That, that's like the, the basic way. I think it's the whole right to left thing or the way that we just kind of engineer to this stuff, right? So I can go have this use my current location uh, as well. So it'll do the, it'll use the uh, location uh, widget. Actually, the location view model for the location widget under the hood, which uses the browser's native geolocation API to find my current location, but I'm going to go ahead and put something in here. Let's type in, I mean, I use a lot of LA addresses a lot. So 1-800 Main Street, Los Angeles. So this is in downtown. So bam, so it's going to go ahead and bring that up. And because I've got my browser at like 150%, something, oh, 200%, geez, that's a lot. Uh, the search widget went to the dock mode by default. So I just want to make it so it's nice. Size. Okay, so there we go. So yes, I want to disable that. I just want the pop-up to show up. I don't, I don't need that nonsense, right? So what I can do is that if we look at the search documentation, there's this uh, property here, which it's a property, but it's kind of a method. It's under uh, the search called go to override. And essentially what you can do is you can override the behavior of how it's going to zoom to a location. Uh, there could be reasons for that. Maybe you want to change the duration. You want to get fancy with the easing function that you use. Uh, I don't know if anyone really intended to do this to disable the go-to, but you can. 
So the way you do that is that when I create my search widget here, I can go ahead and do something like, um, let's say go, go to override like so, and just have it return null. So now I've overridden the go to, I can do a search over here for 100 Main Street, uh, let's do Los Angeles so it'll pop up on my map. There we go. And bam. Easy, right? I disabled the zoom. I don't zoom anymore. Uh, like I said, I can have this go to do anything I want. The parameters I get back in the go to are going to be uh, I get the view and I get go to params. And the go to params have uh, different options and stuff like that. Uh, pass to it that I can let me override. So I get the target, right? So anything you pass to a go to, the search we're just going to pass to it. Maybe I want to buffer the point. I don't know. I don't know what you're going to do, man. I, but hey, knock your socks off, man. Have fun. So that's like one thing you could do. All right. I think that's kind of fun. That's cool. It's a nice little trick. All right. Mark that one down somewhere. So let me, um, okay. Let's get rid of that. So what else can I do with the search, right? Um, you heard me mention earlier that maybe I don't uh, want to use a search widget per se, but I want to use the business logic to kind of do my own custom search because, you know, uh, that's kind of cool. Um, so because you can do stuff like in, in the API, there's a low level stuff you can do for things based for location services, right? So I can go over here. I can go to Esri task. We have this locator task. This is kind of what's used under the hood. It uses the uh, geocode service under the hood here. It has methods to do things like address to locations where you give it an address, you get back a geocode location, or you give it a location, get back an address. And there's also addresses to locations, which I think requires uh, uh, authentication because it's gonna use credits if you do addresses. So it's like you pass the number of addresses for geocoding. That's the batch geocoding, right? And there's also suggest locations, right? So uh, get locations by character value. So the search widget uses all of these methods under the hood to do its job. But so if you want to get low level, you could, but if you don't want to get that low level, you don't have to, right? So in search, let's go back to search widget here. So the search widget has a view model. And this is where all the business logic as stuff is managed under the hood for the widget. So the, the widget itself is just a view, it's a UI, and the view model handles business logic. Don't give me your MVVM uh, stuff. All right, I don't, this isn't that. This isn't that kind of view model. I don't want to hear it. And we need a name, and naming things is hard. Please, give me a break, okay? There's no rule anywhere that says I need a search widget to use a search, search view model, right? And if you've ever seen me present, I mean, we're all about breaking the rules here, people. So let me go ahead and comment this out for now. I'm going to bring this in here. We're going to go ahead and bring a search view model. Okay, so there's my search view model. So I'll create an instance of that. Search view model uh, I can still pass it the view right search view model takes a view still in the constructor properties but it takes a lot of stuff but I can still pass it the view so I will right now pass it a view and then maybe I will have my Maybe somehow, somewhere under the hood, I'm gonna get a, an address uh, myself, right? Something that I do is gonna generate an address. All right, so there's that 100 Main Street, Los Angeles. Maybe it's coming from a third party API. Maybe it's uh, coming from some other part of my application that has nothing to do with the map, and I wanna display that on the map. Uh, I need to figure out a way to do that, right? So now what I can do is if we look at what methods are on the search view model, there's a search method. Come on, <laughs> right? How easy? Search takes a search term, which could be a string. It could be a geometry. 
It could be a suggest result, which is a one of the suggestions you get back from the uh, suggest result endpoint of the locator service. But we're just going to go ahead and do strings. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, vm dot search address. Come on, come on. That's cool, right? So now I can just search view mob, just do something. Uh, you don't believe me that I'm actually doing anything, so let me cut that out. Let's do a view dot on click. We'll do it on click, just so you can see that there's nothing, nothing funky going on here. Yeah, no, no, no funny business here, people. Maybe I don't want to find that. But I want to find something else. So let's do e dot that point. Let's search for that. All right. I, I can't remember what's going to happen here. We'll zoom it. Yeah, look at that. Come on. So now I just click around my map and I'm doing my search. Oh, that's nice, right? I think that's nice. Okay, so there, that's how you search view model. No search widget involved. I'm just kind of doing my own thing. Um, all right, so that, that's search view model. I kind of wanted to show that and how that works. So you're not limited to just the geocode service of the API to do your searching. Uh, if you come down here to properties, there is a uh, property here for sources. You can add your own custom sources to the API. So you can have, uh, so this is what the source for, I think the default source looks like is the uh, world geocoder and it has all the properties needed for the world geocoder. Uh, we could add some other services in here. But we'll just steal this one. Look at this. So this is kind of cool because now I can have a feature layer as my source, but I don't have to actually add the feature layer to my map. I'm just going to use it for searching purposes. So if I come over to search and just say sources, pass an array, and I got this little object that... Um, matches what the API is expecting. All right, so I have a feature layer source and it's going to point to whatever the service this is because I have no idea what this is. It's going to search for email URL. Uh, display field will be the email so you can change what you want to display when it's uh, doing the little drop down. Um, what, what fields you're interested in. Name, point FS. I don't know what this is. Placeholder, example Esri. And then max results. And there's all kinds of stuff you can get down to tweak how you want the search to behave. So, okay, so now I added my own custom source. Uh, by default, it's gonna leave the default sources in there so I can still use the World Geocoder. Now I have an option. I can either search everything. Uh, so it'll do the job of sending a request to both the Geocoder and the uh, feature layer to do its searching, or I can pick out what I'm interested in searching for, right? Uh, I don't know this data set. Oh, example, Esri, okay, Esri. Oh, look at this. Emails for people. Doyle. And there's someone from Esri, Ireland. I don't know where this data came from. I'm not sure they meant to publish. Uh, well, I mean, all of our emails are, are available everywhere, I think. I got that from the doc. Okay, that's not my fault if someone goes in here finding people's emails. I got it from the doc, dude. But, 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 you're not limited to just locator feature layers. You can do a custom source. Search source. Here we go. So I can create a custom search source in here. Okay, so I kind of forgot how to do it. You need to provide, um, you need to overwrite the get results, get suggestions, and I think there was something else to override as well. So we're gonna say that my custom source, I need to have a URL. Uh, so let's see, man, this one does a lot. Okay, okay, let's relax. That one's that's kind of hectic here. But basically, Oh, that's right. This is uh, French uh, uh, geocoding service. Uh, open source geocoding service thing. What's in France, right? How do you spell Eiffel Tower? Eiffel. Oh, Eiffel. Eiffel. Bam. Right? Nice. So, what does it actually look like? Let's look at the... Let's look at the sandbox for this one, so I'm not writing... That's a lot of code to write, man. I don't feel like writing that much code right now. Come on. Give me a break. Uh, so basically, here's the API uh, for the, the French uh, address search service. 
And basically, I just have a, I can provide my own placeholder. I need to override two things. I need to override get suggestions, which is basically going to send a. So the Esri World Geocoder Service has a su suggestions endpoint that returns suggestion results. Um, this one, for example, has a similar one, but uh, it's just like a search thing. Like, right, as soon as you send it a certain number of. Um, terms like uh, characters it has like a limit in here that'll limit the number of results you get back from it um then it'll give you some results or suggestions for your search thing so you need to know the api you're working with you might need to customize it a bit because maybe yours doesn't support suggestions you might have to write a weird uh like query or something to get some results back but you know that's why you have to overwrite get suggestions to get the stuff you need to get and you just need to format it a certain way to return it with key, uh, the text, and then the source index, because we need to kind of know where, what was the uh, the source, right? So where is the, excuse me, where is the result coming from, right? The, the widget needs to know that. And then you need to override to get results. So it's going to take, uh, like, locations. So if there's a location provided, meaning that someone used the point thing, the find my current location in the search widget, you get a, a point location. You're going to do a reverse geocode. So there's different endpoints in this French one for doing a reverse or doing a regular search. They just need to parse, uh, it's not parse, but need to construct your query, uh, give it the lat lawn, um, and then get your suggestion result text. So whatever they clicked in here and stuff and get that. And um, nope, set a limit and I send the request off. And then you need to parse the results from that request. Right? They're not going to look like the results you get back from a third-party API probably are going to have... Uh, there's no guarantee they're going to have a lat long. They might have just XY. They might have the, some weird format for returning the geometry location or something. So you just got to figure that out, all right? Uh, which is cool. The neat thing here, too, is that you might be able to do some sort of weird kind of um, uh, transformation of the data as you do your search or something or validate before you do the search. I don't know. I think custom search source is really cool. I dig it a lot. Now, whoever worked on that is a genius, right? Because, man, that's awesome. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, I think the uh, search widget is really cool. Um, I've gone over quite a bit of it. Uh, check out the API for it, right? I think there's a lot of really cool stuff in the API for search widget. Just come over here. Things you can do with the, the widget by itself, uh, just with different properties you can set for it. You can customize it a bit. Um, it's got the regular search uh, and suggest methods on it as well that you can do. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. So have some fun with it. Uh, play with search. Use it for your own apps, right? Have, have a blast, man. Uh, customize it. Knock yourselves out. Thanks.